right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, we're going to have to create an account. So select that you are a student. And then go ahead and put in an email that you check regularly. It's going to be really important you do so because you're going to get a lot of updates on there. And it's also important to read the requirements for a password. Make sure to have one uppercase alphabetical letter, one lowercase, one number, and one special character. So now we're going to go ahead and put in your legal first and last name and also your home address. So for these purposes, um, I'm going to put Michael Johnson. And we're just going to put Intercom's address for his home. So now go ahead and put in your cell phone number. Again, make sure that the phone number you put in is a phone that, a number that you check regularly, that it's your phone. And put in your date of birth. And make sure you put that you are applying as a first year student. You are just graduating high school, so there's no way that you can be a transfer student. And that you're applying for the 2017-2018 year. And also make sure to check the boxes in order to continue. All right, we have an account, so we can go ahead and start creating our profile. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create our profile. So we're going to go on to the My Colleges tab. It's just to show you where all your colleges will show up once you search them in the College Search tab. So you go ahead and search any college that you know is on the Common app, and we'll go into my, your My College tab. All right, let's go, go ahead and get started on our profile. So go into the Common App tab and go ahead and get started. So it's just the same information, first and last given name. Um, suffix means if you are a junior or senior. So in this case, it is not Michael Johnson Jr. <laughs> All right, for this case, we're going to go ahead and put Mike as his preferred nickname. And say no to have you ever use any other name unless you legally have changed your name. And go ahead and put in if you are a male or female. And they give you, a, it's really interesting, they give you a box to be able to share your gender identity below. So if you don't recognize yourself as either male or female, you can go ahead and put what, how you would like to be recognized as. All right, so the phone number is already saved, so we're just going to go ahead and put no other phone. And now this is a part where you can put in your religious preference, if you uh, have any U.S. Army status, anything like that, your demographics. So go ahead and fill it in. So Michael is Buddhist and he is not Hispanic. He's gonna go ahead and put native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander. And then the Common App gives um, him the option to specify where he's actually from, Guam, Hawaii, Samoa, etc. So Mike is going to be from Hawaii. So you're gonna go ahead and click yes for the question in the section um, about that you are content with your demographics. So now we're gonna go ahead and put your country of birth. So Mike is from the United States and he is born in Sacramento. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill this out. It's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously he was born has lived in the United States for 17 years because he was born here. And number of languages you're proficient in, it gives you the option to specify which language and if it was your first language. And do you read, write, speak it at home? So you go ahead and fill that out. And you have to also put in your citizen status. With that being said, you need to put in your social security number as well because it's required for applying for financial aid. So it's really important you do this step. And go ahead and click yes for scholarship information. You want to get as much money as you can. So they're just going to go ahead and send your information or try to match you up with some scholarships you can be eligible for. 
All right, and if you're eligible for the Common App Fee Waiver, you can go ahead and fill in your information. So for this case, um, Mike is going to be eligible. So you go ahead and se select that all that applies to you. So if you get a SAT waiver, you select yes. If you have free or reduced lunch, anything that applies to you, select it so you can receive as many fee waivers as possible. You're going to ha go ahead and have to give this to your counselor so they can do their digital signature and sign off that you indeed get a fee waiver. It's really important to make sure you talk to your counselor about this. And select yes for receiving more information from Strive for College. This again is just linking you up with um, different people that can help you out. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about our household. So you need to put in your parents' information, if they're married, not married, who do you live with. Colleges really want to know what's going on in your life. And again, um, we're circling view family tutorial. On all the tabs, there is a tutorial for if you have any further questions. It will go through step by step each tab and the steps you need to take to complete your common application. So if you have any questions, go ahead and click that. It will say view, for example, view profile tutorial. So now we're going to go ahead and finish filling in the family information. So Mike's parents are married and he lives with both parents. So he's going to go ahead and fill that in. And Mike does not have any children, so you click no. So now you need to put in your parents' information. So parent one, he decided to do his mother first. You need to put in if your parent is alive. So in this case, his mother is living. And she is a Mrs. So we're gonna just, he's just going in and filling in his mom's name, last name, her name before she was married, all of her information. And for your parents, you can also put if they have a suffix as well. And you need to put in their, your parents' country of birth. So in this case, she is born in the United States. And just an email that your parents check regularly. You can also put in their preferred phone number. So in this case, um, Jane's mobile number is preferred. And just go ahead and put that in. It also asks you if parents one address is the same as your home address. So if it's not, you're going to go ahead and click a different address and fill that in. But for this case, it's the same as the home address. And you also need to put in your parents' occupation as well as the highest level of education they have completed. So in this case, Jane is an engineer. She's employed. So you're going to go ahead and select employed. And her position is, or title, is civil engineer. It also asks you if your parent is employed or retired from a college or a university. In this case, no, but if, you, if your parent is employed at a university, it's really important to put that down. So just go ahead and put in your parent's current employer. So Jane works at Caltrans, which is for the state, and just the highest educational level for her. And go ahead and also insert the number of colleges that your parent has been to. So in this case, she's been to one, and then you're going to go ahead and click Find College and search up the college that your parent has been to. So in this case, she went to Sacramento City College, so you're just going to go ahead and click that. And then click Continue. So now they know the college that she's been to. You also are going to receive how many degrees did they get from this college, the type. So in this case, she got an associate's. And then also you're going to say the year that your parent has received that degree. If your parent has received multiple degrees, you're just gonna go ahead and click all of the degrees that they have received. So now for parent two, you're gonna do the exact same thing. So now he's gonna do his dad. So it's the exact same thing, nothing changes. We don't need to go through this, we just did. So now we're gonna go into education. So now that this is all about you. When did you start high school? 
So it already knows our location. So it's gonna go ahead and already have some nearby schools. So we're just gonna go ahead and click Intercom High School. And the date that you started. So we started in August, 2014. And Intercom is not a boarding school. So we're gonna click no. And it says, did you or will you graduate from the school? So we're gonna say yes. We're applying to college, so that is the plan. And you also need to put in your graduation date. So for us, that will be May 2018. It's coming up real soon, guys. And there will be no change in progression. So now you need to put in your counselor's information. So it's going to be a Mrs. And for this case, we're gonna do Miss Stoddard. So shout out to Miss Stoddard. So we're just inputting her information. If you have any questions about your counselor's information, you don't know their first, last name, their email, anything like that, you can go ahead and go onto your school website. There should be a counselor's tab and that should answer any questions for you. Or if not, you can go ahead and actually go to your counselor and they can help you input this. So it's really important to put in your counselor's email and phone number. It's pretty self-explanatory. Other secondary schools, if you've been to different schools, you can go ahead and click that and it'll pop up as you can see and you have to put in why you left that school it's really important all right so now it gives you a preview or i guess review of what we have filled out so far so that's when you can just go ahead and check if the information is correct and then there's that edit button that you can click to edit any of that information so it talks about the colleges and universities you want to go to, your grades, um, your current most recent year courses, any honors classes you've taken, or community-based organizations. You'll also need to talk about your future plans. And now we're going to talk about our grades. So talk. you need to find out your class size. For this case, we're going to say 500. You can always ask your counselors, maybe even your teachers, what your class size is if you don't know. Um, we're going to put no class ranking because we don't have class rankings here at Intercom. Say Mike has a 3.8 weighted GPA. All right, so now the current or most recent year courses. This is really important because they want to know what classes you are taking now. So that's when you go ahead and fill in your course. You can also say if it's AP, IB, honors, and they really take that into account the rigor of the class you're taking your senior year so for this case we're going to say it's an ap class we're going to say it's ap lit and that we're going on a semester system just because intercom does go for a semester system if your high school is something different then you go ahead and put quarter or whatever it is and this person mike is going to be taking ap literature for the full year and you're just going to do the same thing for all the classes you're taking. Next class, we're putting in IB history. If you take chemistry, you go ahead and put that. If it's honors, you're going to click that. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And as you can see, it just keeps saying the same thing. Course three, course four, et cetera. So now for testing. We're going to go ahead and click yes for you would like to self-report any tests you've taken. SAT subject tests, SATs, AP, IB. We're going to go ahead and click yes so that you can put in your scores. So for this case, we're going to put the SAT and that Mike took it after March 16th. And then it gives you um, a yes or no question for international applicants. But so we're just going to go ahead and click no. You don't even have to bother up with that one. And then you have to say the number of SAT scores you wish to report. So we're going to go ahead and say one and that he did take it with the essay. So you just go ahead and fill in your SAT score at this point say your math score your reading score all of that that is up to you to do if you need any if you have any questions on that you go onto the college board and it'll answer everything so since mike is imaginary we don't have his sat scores so we're just gonna go ahead and next to activities so we're gonna go ahead and click yes that we have activities that we would like to report and then this you can clearly see it gives you when you participated in these activities. So you have to say the type of activity that you've done, if you have any leadership role in it, a description of it, and the grade level. You're also gonna say if it was during the school year or during summer, hours you spent on it. It also gives you an option. It's a drop down section. 
of the activities that you can do. There's dance, debate, music, work, anything like that. And there's also another option if you don't see anything on there that you've done. And now writing. This is one of the most important parts. This is how the colleges know who you are. So you're going to go ahead and click I understand. And after that, you read that, there are going to be college essay prompts for the Common App. Go ahead and click the prompt that relates to you the most. Make sure that your response is no shorter than 250 words and no more than 650 words. It's really important that you're within those parameters. And then it gives you a box to go ahead and start your essay. And you can also go do it on Google Docs and transfer it. That's why it has that triangle there that the cursor just went over. It's really interesting. They also have a disciplinary history. So if you have ever been in trouble with the law or anything like that, which I highly doubt. So for this case, we're just going to say no. And that's it. You can go ahead and say no, nothing else. And we're going to go into additional information. If there are any type of circumstances that you have going, gone through, like you had to miss school for a couple months to help take care of your family and actually work, you're going to go ahead, that's just an example, you're going to go ahead and click yes and actually fill in what those circumstances are. So if you have any gaps in your grades, like oh, maybe you got a C, but all the rest of your grades are an A and it's because of some type of family situation, that is your chance to go ahead and explain yourself, explain to the Common App, explain to the colleges what was going on in your life. And it gives you the same box as it did for the personal essay. You could go ahead and do this in Google Docs and transfer it over, have it be edited it's by someone that you trust. And then you're going to go ahead to the next tab once you're done with all of that and input your courses and grades. So since we didn't put any colleges on our list where it didn't pop up, our transcript, but you're going to say yes that you have access to your transcript because all of our counselors have given it to us through this college workshop. If not, you can go ahead to your office or counselors and they will be gladly give it to you. And then it goes to your grades. So your ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade courses, you have to go ahead and manually input those. Same thing for the 10th grade. You just click add your 10th grade courses and you're gonna go ahead and have to watch the video on how to do it because it is a little complicated, but that's why they have the video there for you and other courses. So if you took any type of summer course, college course, that's your chance to say yes and input those as well. And then you're done.